Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Welcome to the 28th July 2014 Selectman's Meeting. Roman 1 is recognition of service with Barry Newcomb. Please come front and center. Good evening, sir. You're, uh, please, please come out here. You're, uh, you're going out with a bang and face the crowd. This is a uh, resolu resolution and recognition of service from the Hampton Board of Selectmen from Mary Louise Woolsey, Russell Bridal, James Waddell, Richard Griffin, and Phil Dean. Whereas Barry Newcomb has served the people of the town of Hampton with dedication and loyalty as a police officer, detective, sergeant and prosecutor of the Hampton Police Department for 17 years. Barry has served with distinction, providing guidance and leadership during his tenure as a faithful, appointed official. He has served the town above and beyond the call of duty on many occasions, often at personal sacrifice. Be it resolved that the selectmen and the citizens of the town of Hampton make known their appreciation for your services that you have rendered to the town of Hampton given this day in Hampton, New Hampshire. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Please take it. It's been an honor to serve in this town. I've lived in this town for 31 years, and I, I know so many people here, and it's just been a pleasure to serve, and I hope to continue doing that as a part-time officer here. The chief was uh, gracious enough to let me can stay on and uh, help where I can fill in some holes for him. But really, it's been a pleasure uh, serving the community, and. Uh, I know the guys that are taking over my spots so will we'll do the same. So I've enjoyed it. Good deal. Thank you so much. Another fine graduate of Winnicott at 83, yes, right? <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, Barry. <laughs> Roman 2 is a public hearing. RSA 674-40 dash small alpha delegation of authority to accept dedicated streets um mr chairman i object to that i don't think that that is uh that this uh, is legal uh point of order mr welch would you please lead us into this and then we'll pick it up for discussion prior to uh, mr. mr chairman uh this would be to accept uh the following roads brad street elliott street Jonas, janron hedman randall and park avenue um, they were platted by the planning board, and in one case uh, by the state, uh, which deals with Park Avenue. One is a historic street. This is for record only on a portion of Park Avenue. Uh, 67440A delegates the selectman authority uh, to accept dedicated streets that are platted by the planning board. These streets have never been accepted, but they were platted. That's about it. Do you see any legal challenge raised by Selectman Wilson in uh, going forward with this public hearing? I don't know what the challenge is. So well, we under 674 40 a delegation of authority to accept dedicated streets, it says it, uh, in Roman 2, if such a delegation is made, and this goes uh, back to the uh, June 22, 1993 um, amendment by the legislature, if a, such a delegation is made, the local <coughs> governing body may vote to accept any dedicated street only if the street corresponds in its location and lines with the street shown on a subdivision plat or site plan approved by the planning board. Okay, point I of order. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to push this back. Point of order. Pardon me. We're going to push this uh, back for the next uh, selections meeting, and you can address your your points of order with town council when it comes back. Okay. Roman three. Public comment period. Those that wish to make public comment, please take the podium. Seeing none, Roman 4, announcements on community calendar. Selectman Wilson. Another nice letter from a uh, fine resident of Hampton uh, congratulating two firefighters who responded to a medical emergency at the family's home, um, Bill Payne and Dean Sonis. And uh, we appreciate hearing from the public, and it's nice to know that the public is appreciative of their first responders. Says uh, the nice lady said, we are fortunate to live in a town with such excellent personnel in the safety world. So uh, we appreciate that. We appreciate hearing from you. Um, I would just like to say that I did go to the um, 
What was it called, Fred? Fred was there too. The uh, over at Seabrook. <laughs> oh, the uh, the Sea Rise meeting. The Sea Rise meeting, and it was interesting. There were a lot of different um, uh, pro points brought up, and it was interesting to see a number of people there from Hampton, and it was interesting to see the University of New Hampshire. But to me, I didn't see a lot of. Uh, I don't know. I am. I didn't see a lot of being accomplished, and they're worried about a lot of things some time in the future. But I just see so many things that are so wrong now that I would rather concentrate on. Really, I didn't. I didn't see a lot of solutions for the short term at all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. And again, there are uh, several agenda items that folks may be here to speak at. There will not be uh, public hearings on those that follow on down through our, our agenda items. So again, last call for any opportunity to speak under community or public uh, comment period for four minutes. Last chance. Going once, going twice, gone. Thank you. Roman 5, consent agenda, please. I will so move, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. A second. I'll second that. Any discussion? Yeah. All those in favor? Unanimous. Roman six appointments. One, Chief Sullivan, Police Department, Departmental Update and Entertainment Activities Ordinance. Sir. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Chair, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'll quickly go over our uh, monthly stats and then uh, we'll talk a little bit about the noise ordinance which we've been asked to, to come in and discuss or I should say entertainment ordinance. Uh, the general overview uh, as we just saw we've, we've had two uh, recent retri retirements this year Sergeant Joe Galvin and the long-serving officer and Sergeant Barry Newcomb who we had just in moments ago. Both of those positions have been filled um, both by Hampton residents. Uh, Officer Chris Kaiser and Officer Clay DeMarco have been hired to fill those roles. Chris lives in town with his wife and they just uh, welcomed to their family their first child. Um, we're very excited to have him on board. Clay is the son of um, Sue DeMarco and Vic DeMarco. Vic is a retired captain. Sue is a former uh, rec director here and long, long serving, long resident. So we're very thrilled to have Clay join the family again. Uh, well, I said should say our family and uh, we're thrilled to have them aboard both of them will attend the New Hampshire 165th Police Academy which begins on September 8th um, so that brings us to our full strength full time obviously we'll lose them for the the uh, fall period when they're at the Academy but we'll, we'll make do talk a little bit more about our part-timers uh, we've come to you a number of times talked about where we're at uh, we were able to hire um, 12 folks out of our last summer class and this uh, winter's class total of 12 much below what we want. We're hoping to do 15 and 15. Um, what that brings us to today as operating specials as of today is 33 part-time officers working, uh, covering 105 shifts per week. Of those 12 that we hired, four of them um, are not available. The three were hired full-time by other agencies, um, and one was called up to military service. So again, that, it, that 33 working numbers includes those folks leaving us at this point in time. Um, and, and again, it is something that we have to address. We were not able to run our summer academy this year because of the default budget. Uh, it is our intention to present uh, to the board through the town manager a warrant article to address that separately. Um, let the town take a look at that separately if they want to, what it would cost us to run that entire program to bring on that summer class to that second group. Uh, we think that's a, a pretty important role and something we should have future discussions on. Our activity. Uh, so far from the same time period compared to the same time period last year, our calls for service are up 12%. Our arrests, arrests are about flat, uh, about 500. Our DWIs are up 15%. The drug offenses remain the same. The incidents reported to us uh, are 21% increase. Um, and those offenses that are reported within those 21% increase are up 10%. So as you recall, if somebody gives us a report, uh, something was stolen, something was broken, something happened, again, those are up 21% compared to the same period, but the number of offenses in there is also up 10% compared to that. Our felonies remain the same as last year. 
while those are increased, the felonies remain the same. Accidents are up 3%. Our motor vehicle stops are down slightly 4%, and the parking tickets and income derived from that are down 35% compared to the same period last year. One of the reasons we see that is uh, we do not have folks working in that parking enforcement group this year that we had some kids doing last year. That's something we hope to, to, to address and deal with again uh, in the future years. Something else I wanted to note is critical incidents. Um, we have been involved, our officers responding both uh, for patrol, mutual aid, as well as our officers uh, that are on the tactical team, the Seacoast Emergency Response Team, um, have responded to a number of critical incidents this year uh, in Brentwood, Southampton, and Newmarket. Uh, all very significant, high risk incidents, um, and all our officers uh, responded, both patrol backup and as a tactical team. Can't tell you how proud I am of how uh, uh, well they, they do in those, uh, uh, the leadership roles that our folks have. And, in those uh, positions is, is outstanding. Our folks are well trained, um, they're well prepared to meet those emergencies and they face those dangers uh, on behalf of the citizens every day. But I thought it was interesting to highlight to you folks those three critical events that occurred. Um, parking issues, this is something we've been getting a bunch of. Um, and again, just as a reminder to folks at home, um, the resident parking lots are for residents, folks with resident parking sticker. Let's clear that up, that there are some folks that believe well, hey, there's a Florida plate car here that has a sticker. That's wrong. Well, it's clear that it's really a, it's not so much a resident sticker as much as it's a taxpayer sticker. Those are often approved and given out to folks who own property, so it is valid if they have an out-of-state plate as long as they have an appropriate sticker. Talk about that briefly. There are two different types of stickers that are issued, the free one, the square one that we see. Um, that is, expires in the year and on the month of your registration expiration. The round one, the fundraising one that we pay for, those are good for the calendar year. Again, from time to time, we find those expiration folks are, you know, they may have a, a, you know, a sticker that expires in January, and they think they have some time to deal with that. So we just encourage you to make sure you follow up. If you have questions, you can call the police department or the town clerk's office. They'll point you in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And it's very important there's also uh, when those stickers expire to replace them, that is a small fine of $5. And we'd ask you to follow the directions of where those are to go, and it's the, the driver's side lower front windshield. It's easier for our officers to see those as they go by. I suppose many of the tinted windows on other portions of the cars that make it challenging to see. The deputy had something on parking you wanted to mention too. And Just on the stickers, we do sometimes the most irate calls we get are based on complaints about either we're not issuing tickets where we should be, and a lot of times it's mistaken, we'll go up and inspect, or people that got a ticket and they don't believe it's justified. Please understand the officers just following the directions from, from the administration to enforce those parking regulations. What I found this year, I go out when I get the phone calls, and we have some signage issues that we're going to be working on. You know, we're past the 4th of July. We'll have more time to focus on those things with Public Works. And just be patient with us. If you have an issue, please call. If you get a denial letter and you still feel you're in the wrong, please call us. Somebody will respond to you, and we'll certainly sit down and talk with you. And if I, we have to go out and inspect the area to see if we did it right, we will certainly do that. And we want to work particularly with the citizens uh, that deal with the congestion down here all the time. Uh, we want to work with you, so just give us a call. Don't get upset with us. Uh, we're more than willing to listen. Just sometimes we get these written um, appeals, and it's hard to decipher what they're appealing. It just they don't think they should have got a ticket, but they don't tell us why. If you want to speak with us instead of sending us the appeal, we'd be more than willing to come talk to you and deal with it that way. It's a parking ticket. We're not looking to generate a lot of revenue from it. We're trying to get people to comply with the parking regulations. So give us a call. Somebody will answer. And the best course of action, right? what's That's that? what I do. <laughs> <laughs> the best course of action is that you can download an appeal form off of the website, the www.hamptonpd.com, um, and send that to us, and again, we'll, we'll follow that process. Mr. Chairman, on that portion, if you want to, I'll answer any questions on that portion of the report before we Thank get to the next, uh, if you we'll, like. We'll segment this for uh, questions on departmental updates, like in Wilson. I have a couple of quick questions. I appreciate your thought on the summer class. However, I am hoping to see more permanent police officer positions in the Hampton Police Department. Perhaps we can go to permanent officer positions at a time in 2015, 2016, and 2017. Even that is just sticking your finger in the dike. But we are bleeding personnel, and that it's not doing us much good um, continuing to focus on the part-time specials, although they are very valuable. But you need beefing up on your, your uh, regular uh, full-time 
enforcement I officers. concur completely, and I have offered to the town manager my proposed budget um, just is to address that issue this year. I don't think we should exclude them. They're both issues that need to be right. addressed. Right. Um, have you gentlemen noticed, or have the officers on duty <laughs> noticed, that uh, businesses in the area of North Beach are allowing their customers to park in the resident parking and parking spaces up there instead of having uh, room on their own premises? I have had. Um, well, there are a number of businesses that use those lots, and they, mm -hmm. those have been adjusted over time. They were just recently readjusted on the number of spots. I think it was earlier in the spring, I think. So is it an issue? No. I mean, people parking up there is an issue. But is it yes. a special issue of folks doing okay. something to save their property on the North Shore? Not so much I see. Again, we talked about at some point we need to address the numbered streets because that is a, a safety right. issue we need to deal right. with. But as far as the other thing, it is a constant thing on, on those great days to find parking down there. It's a real challenge. Thank you for what you do. Thank you. It's a tough job, gentlemen. Selectman Griffin. Yes. Um, I just wanted to say when I just mentioned about that sea level rise, <clears throat> one of the things that they mentioned they felt very strongly about was that towns should forecast the building of their police and fire stations not in wet areas. We thought that was a good idea when we proposed it, but the town didn't, so we yeah. know where we are at this point. <laughs> so that, I mean, that, I just thought that was interesting. Yeah. But going to your report, um, the, uh, private parking lots that people are paying for. There seems to be a lot of controversy about them on mm. several levels. I've heard a lot of people mention it. Um, and I guess it's like just too late to even really bother to do much about it for this year. Or is it, Mr. Welch? Or it's getting pretty late in the season, yeah. isn't the question. I think it's something we have to address next year so that we, uh, and I think maybe if we approach it next year earlier, um, we could uh, that might be a good time to also address about people putting orange cones and sawhorses in front of their property that we're dealing with the issues of blocking sidewalks with signs and that that mm -hmm. pop-up stuff it just that issue of the parking lot thing really is a building planning board issue as opposed to a law enforcement issue mm -hmm. so what we've been addressing when we get the complaints we document them make sure we pass them on to, to building uh, but any of those things where folks are standing in the roadway waving the signs to pull them onto those properties, we deal with those folks from a disorderly conduct point of view. You can't block a road, block a sidewalk, that sort of thing. We're doing that all over town. But when we see those issues, we had, we're having our folks address that. But the, the lot issue is really not a law enforcement issue. It is a, an issue that's being dealt with at, at, the, mm -hmm. at that level, as I understand. Well, I think next year they have to approach it earlier so that I there's agree. a way to warn people that it's not really supposed right. to happen. Right. Not a new issue. Yeah. Oh, I understand. Uh, last year, I think we approached it, and we're more, or not last year, but the year before, we were active all through the summer, and I think it had, you know, it kind of abated it. Um, what about the private parking? Uh, one of the areas I meant I heard about was, I believe it's, I'm not sure if it's Bradford or Atlantic or one of those streets in there. That one night there were 30 people uh, ticketed in the middle of the night or something like that? No, I think that was Dover Ave. Dover Ave? I went down and dealt with that again, my my uh, little speech about the parking issues there. It was one of those issues where we have a lot of new officers and we tell them out and we tell them to vigorously enforce the parking regulations. Mm -hmm. Now, Dover Avenue was one where if you read the town ordinance, the east end of Dover Avenue is no parking at the end of the road. There used to be two signs at the end because there's an access up through the dunes to the state park, mm -hmm. and then there's an access to a house that's almost into the dunes, and you have to have that access for fire apparatus or any emergency. So I went down there to look at it. A uh, nice lady came out, introduced herself. She was one of the people that got ticket, and people were upset. And I said, okay, let me take a look at it. And I broke out the ordinance book. And what the problem was is the officer went down there not being familiar and saw two no parking signs at the end where there used to be no parking between signs. So that's one of the issues I'm talking about. We have to go around now and start looking at some of the signage issues. Um, I'm doing that with Public Works. I've also been doing some of that with State DOT. I even reached out to the Port Authority, um, some issues where they posted their parking on the road leading out to the pier. Mm -hmm. That's all posted no parking now, but that's under the authority of the Port Authority, not the town of Hampton. I talked to the harbor master, and he gave us 
are his blessing that we can write town tickets on that area, particularly as it comes up to the intersection of Ocean Boulevard, which is a, a constant problem. We have a number of parking issues there. So I go out and look at these and talk to people. And the one in Dover Ave, we, we spread the word that please send the tickets back in. We were going to uh, grant appeals on those. I heard that, yeah. Um, and, and take care of them that way simply because the officer did his job. He saw a no parking sign but wasn't aware of the history. And that's one of the things we deal with with the number of new offices we have. There's a lot of history down there to the parking issues and the issues of how business has been done in Hampton Beach, and we try to make that work for people but still enforce the law. So well, that was one of those ones. you a good job because I think this person was satisfied, but, you know, they happen to call a few times and whatever. Well, I mean, as you know, you've been around a long time. For every rule in Hampton, there seems to be an exception. So <laughs> to have brand new guys get up to speed on what all of those exceptions are takes a little bit of time. Now, what about people putting cones down around 10th or 12th Street? Do you know about that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you want me to take that one? Yeah. <laughs> sure. The problem you have on those roads um, is they're not really conforming widths of road of, of, of what you see today. And you, you run into the property boundary of the property owner and the right of way for the town or the state on Ocean Boulevard. So where is that line? Where do I tell the guy, you can put your cones here, but not there? And as you go down those streets, you'll see, just like we ran into the problem on Ashworth Ave when we did all the renovations down there, this property that probably is on town right-of-ways and people that have paved over things and kind of just used it over the course of time. But that area is getting busier. Um, our calls for service up there seem to be getting busier, and parking is becoming a premium issue. As we saw a couple months ago, we had a whole group of people in here talking about the 10-minute issue up there. So now people are forced going down on the back, trying not to park up on the front, and it's where can you park? Right. Is that a driveway? Is that the roadway? And there's a lot of work to be done up in that area. Those, those numbered streets um, <clears throat> are troubling. I remember a couple of years ago, I went down there and on my own time visiting a coffee shop in the area, and I parked on a street. I knew there was no regulations. A gentleman come out and told me, you can't park there. And I go, why is that? He pointed to a sign that was had to be 30 feet up in the air up on a pole, which... We don't post signs like that. And there was a sign. I go, yeah, that's a problem. I go, that isn't a town sign. Somebody else did that. I don't know if that's your sign or not, but I would have it removed because we're coming down next week and removing all these signs. It, it happens. Mm -hmm. People put up their own signs. They want a little privacy in their neighborhood. There's a lot of them out there. Yeah. Well, I can understand how people don't want people to park in what they presume as their front yard, but it's not their front yard. It's, it's a fun. very it's a similar thing we dealt with during the construction problem down here, and generally those issues have to do with yeah. um, I've paved my front lawn and now it's a driveway. The whole area is a driveway. But what we try and deal with, until we address it, we need to, what we try and deal with is we try and identify what the roadway is, and that's what our ordinances deal with. So in some cases, you can see that because the tar is paved at a certain thing and then the color is different and the, the yeah. texture is different. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty good sing signal to us that that's a property line differential yeah. without calling out public works to measure and do all that sort of thing. So we kind of stick with that stuff mm -hmm. and we try and deal with those on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah, so for years, that's been a problem. I'm yeah, sure. and it, it's going to continue to be. Yeah. We do the best we can with it, but until we address that in a global way, we're still going to have those small problems. Well, you're doing a great mm -hmm. job. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Any uh, any thought of the parking enforcement people like you used to have? Yeah, we, we just, um, with the budget, with where we were going, we didn't know where we were going to be body-wise, so we really, that wasn't a priority hiring those folks. We probably could have squeaked a couple of kids in there and done that, but we just addressed it using our patrol shifts at this point. Next year, we definitely want to do that. We think it works well. I think we're down 35%. Well, yeah. It's gonna yeah. Be a watch. And again, some of that depending on what the number is. I agree with that completely. We've got a number of global issues we're talking to the manager about, about kind of pulling some of that stuff more under our umbrella with some of the parking lots and the enforcement and that kind of thing is a more global look. Do we ever look at the town parking lot uptown to see if there's vehicles been parked there for a long period of time? Do we ever do that? Or do we do it frequently? We, okay, ju yeah. we just had one removed. Okay. <laughs> that was probably the one you're referring to. Okay, I'm just, I just yeah. somebody had mentioned it. Generally, that's during storm periods. We deal with that or plowing this time of year. Frankly, we don't unless we get a complaint very, very more often, honestly. But if we get a complaint or someone calls our attention to something, we'll go up and deal with it. One thing I've looked around the uptown part is you can look on five different poles and there's five different half hour parking, one hour parking, one and a half, two hour. At some point we may want to look at <coughs> making that either more uniform mm -hmm. or whatever so that it's it's more fair and, 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 yeah. and just. I think uh, I think the parking on the street up there is <coughs> is definitely either a one or two hour parking but it should be uniform so that when somebody knows they can park uptown it's 
Every one of those is has been in response to a business owner coming in because I need this, and that's why it's kind of chunked out in some cases. But I, I, I have no problem with it. It would be easier for you guys if it was all the same. Well, yeah. Yes. Easier for the public. So, very good. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Uh, I have just one question on the parking on the lot uh, on the corner of High Street and Ocean Boulevard, right across from North Beach Bar and Grill. There, I saw a guy getting a ticket, and he had a handicap sticker. And if if there's no handicap, aren't they allowed to park even if they don't have a, a no. Technically, the law says that if it's a restricted lot, um, then they can't. This is an Let's take the one to Bicentennial. We went through this whole thing. Um, there's two handicap spots within that restricted area. It's it's a restricted lot to sign uh, to sticker people only. Um, technically, that is supposed to be for the Hampton resident handicap only. We've had a couple of folks park in there, get a ticket, and we've dealt with those appeals more of an educational way. Um, but the technical answer is no, because it's a, f a fee base. You have to, to deal with it. That's the, the part of dealing with it. What we deal with those, often they come and we kind of talk them through it and, and eat those tickets if they're appropriate. We contact with the compliance monitor with the Justice Department that where are we with this? Nope, you, you, if it's a town lot, and you have a handicapped spot that's for a town resident that's got a handicapped sticker. And we went through this. We had one that was rather contentious with us. And we granted the appeal with, with the caveat that they don't do that again. And the inclination was that they were going to do it anyhow and push, push the issue, but they didn't. We haven't had any further issues with it. It's just one of those things that we'll issue a ticket, but if somebody's reasonable with us, you know, we'll listen to the appeal. Um, but we are on the right issuing the ticket. Okay. For the most part, we... We obviously try and stay away from that. The issue for us is we had so much pressure on those resident spots that we try and stay on that pretty pretty greatly. But though it, your point is correct in that with those handicapped, they can park anywhere but those fee-based or restricted areas. Can't park in a fire zone, can't park in a hydrant zone, that kind of thing. And those, yeah. That's where we're at. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, Chief, uh, a hail and farewell to uh, your, your new uh, folks and to uh, that fine sergeant uh, that just retired that we just recognized tonight. Uh, Thank you. My firm belief that you, uh, you two have the finest uh, police force uh, in the state, if not the nation. And uh, Mayor Louise Woolsey is uh, to be applauded for seeking to endorse uh, the hard work you do. Um, I am struck by uh, some of the, the uh, issues we deal with here at the, uh, the head shed from time to time. Uh, and I know that you've got uh, a heavier part of the batting order that you folks face on a daily basis, and uh, we're not uh, um, unaware of that, so we appreciate it. Uh, as we read the, uh, the papers this weekend, where we, we should be thankful for some of the, the headlines that we do see. And, uh, and a segue, perhaps, to the noise ordinance, uh, Captain McDonald from the Portsmouth Police Department uh, informed uh, those in Portsmouth that he's not arresting Shrek. Um, for the noise violations at Prescott Park. Uh, in Exeter, uh, there's front page news about cracked sidewalks, whereas in uh, the, the Donetsk region of the uh, Ukraine, it's literally uh, raining bodies in um, uh, an invasion by Russia. Uh, those people in the Gaza Strip, um, they have a different set of uh, governance challenges, and uh, um, we should be thankful for the, uh, the issues that we confront. And, uh, the, the lightness of our load sometimes. And uh, having said that, we appreciate everything you folks do. Please lead us into your um, perspective that Selectman Woolsey has requested, the Entertainment Activities Ordinance. Thank sure. You, sir. And I just want to say thank you for your kind words to, to our men and women. We're just very honored to be able to represent them in front of you folks. We're very proud of the work that the men and women of RPD do. Um, entertainment ordinance. So, as we all know, there has been a new draft of the entertainment ordinance at the last town meeting, and we have endeavored to try and implement that as directed by that ordinance. Um, so, what we've done is went out and purchased the meters that are necessary to meet that standard. Um, had some training so folks know how to utilize them. Um, again, I want to set talk about that. Um, there's been some. I don't want to talk about any specific case um, as we go through this. We're talking in global generalities how we're dealing with them, what we do when we get complaints, and how we handle them. So, in general, as you know, the ordinance requires that for us to deal with a violation, we have to have a complaint. When we receive a complaint, an officer will respond, make an assessment. Um, if the assessment is that there is something that appears to be a violation, it's a licensed establishment, um, and it's appropriate to do so, they'll take a reading. That reading is, and I'll, I'll let the deputy get into a little bit more if you want to get into what the machine is, but basically they have to go for a 30-second period of time, a duration, so that that uh, noise is, or that 
um, volume is expected to be over that number. They have a clock, they use the, the uh, meter, and they determine whether or not that sound continues above the allotted threshold uh, during that period of time. As you know, there's two different numbers, one before 11, one after 11. Um, at this point in time, we've issued only one summons under that ordinance. Um, and we're, that's in the court process, and we'll see where that leads us. In general, what are we seeing? Uh, I've had our guys go out, the deputy's done this himself, to go out. We're taking some numbers just to see what those numbers look like. What, what is it? We're trying to keep track of some of that. Um, and frankly, it, it varies. Um, sometimes those numbers, the ambient noise down on the beach during the prime time can be very loud, and at times that exceeds the level, it appears. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, after the 11 o'clock, there, there's a lower level, and it seems that that ambient noise is an issue. You know, so we're going to continue to track some of that data for ourselves. Um, you know, I'll let the deputy talk about his anecdotal uh, times going out with the meter and seeing what he sees. Um, you know, we're, we're also trying to go around just for a uh, feeling is what's the noise level going to be up to five corners at 11 o'clock? What is that? I think you'll be surprised at some of those readings. You know, what, what's the noise level as we sit here and talk? What is it in here? What's that number? Um, having used that machine or used similar machines around, sometimes you're surprised at what that number is. It's a, you know, 50 decibels is a, a lot quieter. You know, it's a lot, you expect it to be a lot quieter when you go outside at 11 o'clock at Little River Road, you know, and you think, yeah, it's nice and quiet out here. I hear the crickets chirping, and then it's, you know, 49 to 52 decibels, you know, that kind of thing. So um, I think that's helpful for us to understand what that is when we go to these violations. So in general, that's where we are. Rich, you want to talk about the machine? This is, uh, we bought two new meters. Uh, based upon the ordinance, we wanted to make sure that we could defend uh, our system that we were utilizing. And I always use the comparison to radar. When we do radar enforcement, the officers are required to have an understanding of how the radar works and to check to make sure the calibration is working on the radar the beginning of the shift and after each stop that they're going to issue a summons, they have the ability to do an internal and external calibration check. They don't calibrate the device that takes a technician, but we have means to which we can check to make sure it's working within the manufacturer's specifications. The sound meters are very similar in that regard. We have an internal calibration check and an external calibration check. So the office, the, and it's a very limited number of officers that are going to be allowed to utilize these just because they're rather expensive. As you can see, it's kind of cumbersome. Some of the folks thought it was pretty funny when I was walking around the first night with it, and people were asking if that was for an alcohol test. And I did have a couple of people blow in my direction. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> I go, no, you're good. Go ahead. And, um, you know, just it's one of those things. It's, it's cumbersome, it's, uh, but the people catch on quick what we're doing with it. So I went out on the Wednesday before the 4th, so, uh, July 2nd, just to get myself acquainted with I've used sound meters before but not this particular model and, and one that didn't have an acoustical uh, calibration device. So I got fairly good at it, so I went out and checked a couple of the local areas, and uh, I tried to do some checks around 9.30, got some various readings. Um, but my more concern was the level after 11 o'clock where it drops down to 50 decibels. Um, for informational purposes, we've been sitting here talking now, and the highest right now is me. I've hit 71 decibels when I talk. I have a deep voice, low of 48 since we've been talking. So if that gives you kind of a, a barometer of just in the time we've been sitting here talking, I've been monitoring it, the levels, how noise can fluctuate. Add into the fact when you're outside, is it going out over an open area? Is it bouncing off other buildings? There's a lot of things that affect noise, and I am by no means an expert. I'm just used to walking up and down Hampton Beach with a meter in my hand trying to get a, a bearing on what we're experiencing. Mm -hmm. So on that night, I, I walked the strip. I, I went to some of our entertainment venues, uh, even went inside the casino that had a show going just to see what the inside noise would be like. Very loud. It wasn't a, a, a loud uh, group that was playing, but when you have that enclosed space and, and sound bounces, it, it, it gives you that. They were up over 90 decibels inside. Um, the loudest place that I found was the uh, the seashell, because of the design of the seashell, it projects that noise out across the boulevard and bounces it off the building. Um, there were times it was the Air Force Band was playing, not exactly a, a real rip it up group, um, and they exceeded 100 decibels on a couple of occasions, um, just the way it was. How many? Decibels? Over 100 <coughs> on certain occasions, not for a sustained period. Yeah. 
Again, keep in mind the entertainment orders doesn't apply there, but even if it did, it has to be 30 seconds in duration or more. So as I moved around uh, before 11 o'clock, there's a couple of places that spiked over the limit at that point, but not for the sustain, sustained period. I get 75 up to 80, and then it would drop back down. So nothing exceeded for the 30 seconds. So I went back out at around 11.30 that night, hit some of the same establishments, and variably they were over, simply because 50 is a very low number um, in that environment. And what I found was, is at one establishment, as I was walking around, uh, some of the staff saw me, and they, they questioned, you know, what I was doing. So just, just we're testing the meters. We just purchased the new meters uh, for the, the ordinance, and uh, very cooperative. Wanted to know what we were doing, how we, what they could expect if we were to write a summons, and we want to give them, we want to be as transparent as we can about the process. We don't want to be sneaking up on anybody. We want everybody the chance to comply. So as we we stood there. Um, I asked the question, you know, I was, I was getting a reading of about 68 to 72 decibels with the music playing. I said, would you mind turning the music off for a couple of minutes so we can measure that? Because the big issue is what is the ambient noise? Absent the music, what is, what is the noise level at Hampton Beach at different periods of time? And we turned the, turned the music off, he came back down, he stood next to me and we watched and we were receiving decibel levels of 60 to 65 with no music. The ambient level was above the town ordinance for an entertainment venue. So that does cause a little bit of a problem and when we're trying to measure and determine the source of the noise that exceeds the ordinance. It's problematic for us. It's just when we, now we did have a summons issue to an establishment and the office did a great job articulating you know, similar to radar, how do you know it was that car as opposed to the other one? How do you know it was this as opposed to that? The officer did a great job articulating his reasoning for believing that the noise was being generated by that, that establishment. Um, remains to be seen. It has to go through the court proceed, uh, process and see where the judge goes with an ordinance like that because it's, it's rather new and unique to this area. Um, so we'll have to wait and see how that goes. But It'd be nice to say noise is noise, but th that's just not the case. It, it changes, it varies depending on the, on the environment. The atmosphere has a lot to do with it. So this is going to be a process for us as a police department enforcing this and learning about, okay, what is the right way to do this? Is this actually a violation based on the ordinance or is this something else? So it, it's a process for us and we just ask for people's patience. We do, we do respond to all the calls. Um, at this point, um, the calls are down, I believe, from previous years in complaints, although we have had one summons issued. Uh, but overall, the com noise complaints seem to be down compared uh, to this time last year. I don't know if that's just because of the weather or, or fewer people. I don't know what to attribute that to. I'd have to do more research. But we do go out. We do try to monitor those issues um, and work with the business owners to try to get voluntary compliance with it. I think in general, just to the politically correct thing, I don't want to call the Air Force band noise. It's we're measuring sound and decibel levels. It's all good. Thank you. Any Selectman, questions? Selectman Wolsey. In one sense, I long for the old days when the officer could go up to the casino and stick his head in the door and say, shut those windows, too much racket. But that still happens. Oh, all right. We can still That's work. good. That's good. But. Uh, a great deal of effort went into this ordinance, and I want the public to understand that. A couple of last year's some members of the Board of Selectmen, and you especially, Deputy Sawyer, uh, you knocked yourself out on this, and you did get the decibel levels from ordinances in other communities, in Boston, Old Orchard Beach, wherever you had a whole list of, of areas that I recall with different ordinances on noise and uh, entertainment and sort of pulled everything together and I remember seeing revision after revision and I got kind of tired of looking at revision. I just jump in on that a couple of things and to be clear all through that process yeah. we took the position that we were presenting data mm -hmm. right. especially with regard to the level right. we took no position on what that level was we felt there was a community standard to be set mm -hmm. and we gave guidance to that process. Mm -hmm. But it varied quite a bit sure. and you had yeah. quite a sampling yep. of other communities and what they were doing 
which was very useful for us. There was no real big uniformity, but it was certainly helpful, uh, I'd say, to last year's board. But I did get tired of seeing revisions, and then more revisions, and then more revisions. But it was really worked on very painfully, and, uh, and I know, uh, Deputy, that you took a lot of time out there on the street struggling with it. I thoroughly enjoyed every moment of that project. I want to be right up front with it. <laughs> the, the thing that I think I would like to say, and I have had complaints, and I have had comments, and I have had feedback from individuals who live in that area. And I think one gentleman uh, hit the nose on the head in my estimation when he said it all comes down to being a good neighbor. So I would like to see a little bit more of that um, sentiment as we work through and try not to, uh, you know, if you enjoy one thing, that's fine, but if you're waking up the whole neighborhood, there are people down there running businesses with individuals who have families and who are bringing children with them and who really don't want to be awake until 2 o'clock in the morning. So I, I would say that uh, we're, we're embarking on an adventure, and, uh, and if you can use that as a breathalyzer too, go ahead. I so, don't think it will pass court. <laughs> so <clears throat> what are you recommending as far as the noise ordinance? We're not recommending no. anything. We were asked to come here and give you a state of what we're doing at this point in time. Do you time. think that the ordinance is uh, the way it needs to be? I think we'll, at this point, I think there's a summons that's been issued that let's let, let that go through the court process mm -hmm. and see what the legal process. There's been differing opinions on whether or not um, some folks felt that that was a, a sustainable um, description. We'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll let that process go through. I think one thing that happened, I know particularly in the North Beach area where I live, it was the, probably the quietest Fourth of July I've ever experienced. Uh, there were, were very few fireworks. They were more later on in the week, maybe, at least from what I heard. Well, the rain helped that. Yeah. <laughs> <All these helps. laughs> and um, <clears throat> one of the problems that I thought, if there was any noise, that it, it was from the motorcycles. Yeah. And uh, what do you have to say about that? That's separate from this ordinance, um, that there's a separate section for that sound. That statute was revised um, last year. Um, really effectively, in our opinion, it really hasn't changed dramatically. It went from, uh, I think it was 106 decibels at a particular RPM at a certain distance and angle to just an idle um, at a high number. Frankly, they're the same thing, in, in our opinion, our kind of anecdotal testing, because you're not revving it up, it's just at idle. And I think the number is in the high 90s, or you know, 96, 97, stuff like that. It's, it's a fairly high number. Uh, anecdotally, I, I walk down there, I'm down there frequently. I think it's better. I've heard that it's been better. We tried to uh, set some suggestions on signage. We added it to that variable message board you see. Um, sure, they're allowed bikes. Our experience has been very often they're legal bikes. Some aren't. Some are very deafening and very high. Um, some of the large groups together, you know, if they're all right on that that level, you know, 97 decibels, 96 decibels, very, very loud at idle. When I rev and I change through gears, it's louder. Um, I find it's, it's people revving the, you know, the uh, Japanese bikes. So those are the ones yeah. that catch my attention. Yeah. So, yes, that's an issue. Uh, we try and deal with that as best we can. I won't say that we, we don't believe in doing the separate motorcycle checkpoint stops. I, I just I don't see that as being a you know, fair way to do it. We generally try and do it as an educational benefit. We try and get involved up at Seacoast Harley when they do it. Northampton's been very, very uh, a strong leadership up there. Chief Page taking a great position. We've uh, helped out wherever we can there as well. Um, and I frankly think there's been a <coughs> slight improvement on that. I think so too. Thank you. Okay. It seems to me like I've been down the beach a number of times. I actually ran into you guys a couple of times while I was down there. Um, but the, the ambient noise is much higher than our ordinance uh, a lot of times. And uh, I think it's something that we need to look at. You guys continue as you're collecting your data so that we'll have the information to make sure that, one, we're being fair to our, our people that sleep down there and the people that, that, that have that, but also being fair to the to the uh, restaurants and stuff so that they, they can do their business too. So I think, uh, thank you for your information you brought in. I think it's it's all part of the pieces of the puzzle. Sir? Yeah, I, I agree with Rusty said. The only person I complain about is Rusty on his motorcycle. He and a lot of them by trying to irritate me. 
but uh, no, that you're collecting the data and, and just the thing to be unfair to the people there and be unfair to the businesses. And obviously, it seems like there is some confusion. They so. all, but everybody has a legitimate vested interest yeah, down there, right. and it's where do we where do we draw that yeah. line? We have we have competing businesses sometimes. When we deal with them. Everybody has been very reasonable with us. When we ask them to turn it down, they turn it down. When we ask for compliance with this, or we talk, it, it, I really can't point to somebody and say anybody's the bad guy here. It's one of these things where it's a it's a new area of enforcement for us, and we're trying to work our way through it. And I just ask people be patient with us. And a lot of it's going to be data collection, so we get an idea of what is our baseline. And that ambient noise is. I was even surprised, and I've probably done more noise measurement down there than anybody. Yeah. Standing there, that the ambient noise. And I believe it was a Wednesday night. Um, fireworks had been canceled that Wednesday because of the weather, and I was surprised myself to see the ambient noise was as high as it was in the location because it's not the same on one corner as it is somewhere else because environment plays a huge factor in that. Thank you. And just uh, for a, a reverse recapitulation, uh, you were very clear last year uh, when you came before yes. uh, the former board and that you were looking for instruction and guidance and you did great research. And just for a synopsis, it was Article 33 from the 2014 warrant. It was amended from the floor to reduce decibel levels down to 50. Um, the prior board uh, consisted of three members that are no longer here tonight that voted in favor. I voted against the ordinance that was passed. Mary Louise Wilsey voted, voted for it. So the, this is a new board. We inherit uh, what prior boards do and uh, execute in town voters vote on as a matter of law because this is America. Um, we, we have, uh, again, re-examined some of your source documents and your uh, research that there is a, uh, a decision from Judge Joseph N. LaPlante authorizing uh, a consistent uh, decibel of 85 uh, decibels from a distance of 65 feet that folks have a right to do that. But I think Mary Louise Woolsey is absolutely right. It's all about being a good neighbor. And if fences make good neighbors, then noise ordinance create a lot of work. <laughs> and if we can all work together and, and muddle through it somehow, I think uh, we'll be OK. And thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, gentlemen. Roman 6, appointments number 2, Christy Pulliam, finance director. Monthly financials, MS5 DRA audit form. Good evening. Good evening, Christy. Um, you guys all should have received your June report uh, back on July 17th in your mailboxes. Uh, we're the sixth report for 2014, so the expenditure target is 50%. The month's total income was 693.1K. Of that total, motor vehicles came in at 256.2K, which is 34.2K above the monthly target. This now puts motor vehicles 166K above the budget, or plus 6.25% for the year. The other major contributors to the month's total were building permits at 27.7K, parking lots at 134.2K, interest on taxes at 1139 and departmental at 131.1K, and that does include the um, SRO billing for the school resource officers. That's why the departmental is up a little higher than normal. And the real estate uh, trust came in at 30K. Uh, the expense summary shows the year-to-date departments without debt service but with open POs were 49.4% of the budget, which is uh, lower by 137K or the uh, month's target of 50%. Uh, the majority of the departments are below the target level and don't have any major issues. In management uh, information services, the four equipment-related accounts, repairs and maintenance through replacement equipment, have a combined budget of 81.8K. The allocation of the dollars between the accounts was set several years ago, but the department needs change year to year. This is we keep going to a default there, though some of those lines are higher than others, but through June they're less than 42.2% uh, if you add all four of those accounts and compare them to the 81. In personnel administration, the annual buyback program, when combined with the employee separation cost account, are 81.6K over their year-to-date target. This gap has closed in and this group's account <coughs> is now within the monthly target 
of at um, they're currently at 49.84. So at the beginning of the year, since most of that took place in January, that whole group was over target. Now they have come in, so they're right in line with the 50% um, target. The planning board um, contra contracted services is at 71.7%, which is related to membership dues being paid in the month of June. That's a one-time thing. So, In municipal insurance, the health insurance is on target at 49.99%. The workers' comp second half of the year and property liability year pa yearly payments were made in June, which is putting those to that group of accounts over the target at 60.95%. The police department is at 43.27% overall when the open POs are included. Two accounts in support services, part-time special officers, and summer coverage full-time have a combined budget of 395K with only 53.1K being expended to date. Accounts for 144.3K of the department's favorable variance. Um, that will change now that we're in summer. We've hit the 4th of July, so that will go up. The fire department is at 46.8% overall when the open POs are included, and the uh, four fire suppression OT accounts are at 376 of the annual budget. So that's a favorable position for them. Um, highways and streets is over its target by the 2.6, and that goes back to the snow and ice removal at the beginning of the year. Municipal sanitation continues to run slightly below its target. And in the Warren articles that were passed, um, all of them have been paid except for the ones that were over 10000 We request that they get half of their payments at the beginning of the year, and then I believe in September we issue the second half. Um, but all of the other ones have put in their request and received their money from that special Warren article. And the cost for the third of the nine months relating to the um, collective bargaining agreements has um, been booked also. That was all for the actual financial reports that you guys had received. I just wanted to give you a quick update that the um, bond refinancing uh, were, was successful. It closed on uh, June 16th with a net savings to the town of $540,677. And the uh, um, payments will um, in four years earlier. So that was quite a... Wow. Um, quite a savings um, from when even when we started the process. I think it was in the fours, I believe, when we first came to you guys. So yeah. by the time it all went through and the interest rates and all of that. So that was good news for us. You guys all should have also received your audit, your copy of the audit at the mm -hmm. end of last week, I believe. I put that in your boxes. Okay. Um, you all have that. I will put that up on the um, town website as soon as you guys give me the green light to do so. Um, so that came through, everything went well. Um, due to the operating efficiencies, they were able to include the cost of the single audit as um, part of the original engagement fee, so we were not charged an additional fee for the single audit. Uh, when you guys have a chance to read the audit, you will see the implementation of GASB 34 and 45 was brought up again. I know the board and management have discussed this in previous years. I have begun the process of gathering information in regards to the cost of implementing both GASB 34 and 45, and we'll be bringing that information to you guys once I receive it. I've um, spoke with Kate at um, Plodzik and Sanderson, and she has given me some contacts of other communities and companies that um, they have worked with in regards to both of these. So I have all of that information along with some stuff that uh, Mike had. So I will be um, contacting these organizations and getting some ideas in regards to cost for that. That's in regards to the fixed assets is the GASB 34 and GASB 45 is in regards to the um, post-employment costs for retirees for health insurance and other insurances and stuff like that. So, And I also have the last thing, I have the MS-5, which is the um, form for DRA that the auditors um, put together for us and has to be signed by the board. I didn't get the originals until today. You guys did get a copy in your mailboxes, but it was late in the day that you got that. But I do have the originals here tonight. Um, we had to sign three copies, one for DRA, uh, one for the town, and one for Plaza. So if I could get you guys to sign those, I have gone over them and all of the numbers seem to be accurate with what was reported in the audit. So open up to you guys for questions. <laughs> um, Mr. Manager, I don't see any reason why we need to delay putting the audit up on the 
the website if it's uh, if Christy's comfortable with it. She is, and I believe we talked discussed about that today. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I have no problem with that. I think that would be a good thing. And Mike has also reviewed it, just so everyone knows, and um, stuff, since he was um, kind of in charge at that point. So, I was very disappointed last year when we couldn't refinance because the mark, whatever the market was doing. But this, it's a treat to see this coming to fruition. Um, you make a mental note to explain that to the budget committee because I think they're going to be very happy. Number okay. one, and. Uh, Oh yes, they will, Brian, <laughs> and also the uh, the Gasby information. Uh, have you a rough figure yet on the revenue from the sewer buy-in charges? I knew you were going to ask me that. I have the figure as of July first. Let me just see where that went. Um, as of July first, up into the finance department, um, thirty-one thousand one hundred and twenty-two dollars. That's for the um, sewer access fee. The, for this, the, the buy-in charge, yep. not the hookup. Fee. Not the hookup, no. The $300 is separated out from that number yeah. that, that is, I just gave that to you. That is great. And a great report. I have a couple of odds and ends. Um, dog licenses are showing that we budgeted in revenues anticipating $12,000 coming in. We've got an actual of 8328 after the first six months of the year. So we're still lacking revenue. We still have a whole pile of dog licensing people uh, stalling out there. Yes, so. I know there was the dog warrant was signed a while ago. Fred probably knows mm -hmm. the date on that better than I do. But I remember when it did come to the board mm -hmm. to be signed. I don't know how many dogs were on it. Do we have any idea? Too many. Still too, too many. many. Yes, I'll, I think I'll agree she's with in charge that. of finance, not dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, under, still under the revenue report, Federal revenues and grants, $5,025. you have a rough idea what that was? It just says federal grants. I'll take anything from the feds, but. I don't remember. That was closed okay. out of the planning grant. Oh, yes, that's right. The closing out of the CB, was that that CB? CBBG planning CBBG. grant. Oh, yep. oh, okay. I remember. Okay, that's good. Thank to you, Fred. Um, rooms and meals tax, 672000 budgeted. Um, nothing in yet, not till the end of the year. Usually December 31st, I think. State holds on to its money. Um, parking tickets, because we were talking about this a little bit earlier, uh, 39000 anticipated in revenue for the year. So far, 10870 So we just need to give out more tickets. Um, dispatch revenue, 24053 Are we... Um, in the, are we near to renewing the, I think it's the Hampton Falls dispatch? I don't remember where that falls in. No, I think it's next year. Next year, okay. Um, and you've got your driveway permits. Bear with me for a little. The Rye Sewer Agreement is good. Uh, real estate trust income uh, so far 205,821 which is really good uh, the uh, the only other thing I would comment on because I, I really get excited about it is the uh, encumbrances and you've shown 64 percent roughly in the first yes. six months of the year I love to see those cleared I know some you can't because right. of I think the largest one um, on the last page of my report was in regards to um, the Exeter and High Street Lafayette Roads and Engineering. That's at 76.4K. Right. So I know they're still working on that. Right. And that's the largest of the 100 and what's left? 120. So 76 covers yeah. the majority of that 120. Because I just hate to see money from the prior year sitting right. and sitting and sitting into the next year. Yes. I like to clean it out. I know. You I know you do. Too. <laughs> and one more quick thing on the EMS. Uh, under ambulance revenue, it says allowance adjustment revised, I assume. 69,227. What was that? What happened? Auditor's adjustment. I'm sorry? The auditor's, the auditor's adjustment. adjustment. <coughs> so that's saying that we took in less than we thought we did? Yes, or? yes I okay. believe that's what they yeah. adjusted. So yeah. that's the unpaid yes. individuals. Yes. Yep. So we're starting to see. So that's good that we're starting to see. And you're going to start to see some as far as the board because you're going to need to, to write off some right. of those okay. older ones. And actually, I'm going to um, Dairy Fire Department tomorrow. They're doing a thing on ambulance billing. So I'm taking um, Katie from my office who does accounts receivable, cool. and we're going to go up and just see what they have to say about that since we know that it's something we need to work on. So, 
Christy, would you consider this an accrual? This is this is pulling together what probably hasn't been posted. Do you think that when the auditors did this, they took into account everything that's hanging out there, so maybe in the future there won't be as much? I know that an adjustment was made to that something in lo along those lines. The adjustment was made because we haven't been charging off enough. Correct. Yes. Okay. So we had to. They decided they needed to charge off more given the length of time some of those bills have been out there. Okay. So this is a catch up. Yes. And then hopefully every year we'll see an up to date accounting. We need much. to come up with a protocol every quarter for giving the board Excellent. charge offs. Yes. Excellent. Okay, good. Yeah, thank you so much, Christy. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> yeah, thank you. I've noticed over the years how much you always enjoy your work, but you appear to be flourishing and oh, doing thank a great you. job. So <laughs> thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. <coughs> we water her every so often. <laughs> well, she's flourishing. Um, and it must be nice to have the audits uh, so that it makes you feel that you're on the right track and we're all on the right track. I see your uh, predecessors in the back there tonight. I know. Tonight I hope he's working, not doing uh, putting any like comments on the bottom of the screen or anything. <laughs> channel 22. So hey, maybe you'll have that in your future. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. No, I think it's. I think it was, your report's good. Uh, my two questions were the the fact on the Temesis reports and the timely reporting and the and the and I think I think you're addressing that. So I think mm -hmm. it's yes, we are. It's good. Thank you. Christy, thank you. It's a good report. And my only concern is that I just, and I don't know if it's going to affect us or not, but I keep reading in the paper about different towns where the health insurance is going to really affect them eventually. You know, are we staying proactive on that? And, you know, are we aware of what our costs are going to be and everything? I um, did send an email to uh, Peter Chapel, <coughs> who is our account rep, and they hadn't even, uh, at the time when I was working on our part of the budget, and they weren't giving out any predictions. I do know just from being here over time that we have many years where we're at a lower percentage than all of a sudden it spikes. Yeah. You know, I yeah. don't know how to predict when that will be, but right. I, you know, I've seen all different rates in my 15, 16 years now. So okay. um, yeah. I am budgeting at seven because that's what Mike had thought sounded like a fair number yeah. from what we've seen over the last several years and stuff. I think last year it was only four. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it was in the fours, which was very, very low. Rusty, as an employee, you know that was that's a that was a great, a small increase. So wonderful, director. Thank you very much uh, for a great brief this evening for the great work you're doing. You're filling Michael's shoes very, very nicely and filling those out. Uh, for the record, uh, GASPI is the Government Accounting Standard Board. 34 deals with the uh, the information that you discussed. 45, they're important. They are reflected on the audit, which is a consensus to post that on the website, and they okay. they are adverse uh, comments about that, and they impact our ability yes. as elected leaders to ascertain what our financial decisions uh, have an effect going forward, and exactly what is the condition of the town in terms of its obligations. And, uh, we read that re uh, report on the website, as I would recommend all taxpayers to do so. Uh, we're, we're not getting the job done on that, and I commend your leadership in, in helping to bring those costs so we can get a warrant article for that this year. Thank you very much. Do you guys want to sign these now, or should yes, I leave them on the right? Okay. We'll start one on this side, <laughs> one in the middle, <laughs> one on this end. How's that? That's, there's a diplomat for you. <laughs> And we thought that Mike left a crystal ball in the bottom drawer for you. No, no. just the magic ball. <laughs> we left that for all the everyone to come in and uh, check out. I'll get back to you guys. Do we do all information, other information? I think I only signed two. Do we? Do we have to sign three? 
didn't do my guys miss this one. Yes, you did. Good call. Thank you. Okay. And this one has all of them. All righty. Thank you, Christy. Nice evening, Thank Thank you. Director. Uh, if there is no objection, I would like to move up uh, a taxpayer that is uh, um, here uh, under new business for 1040 uh, to Ocean Boulevard. <coughs> and, uh, if there is no objection, move that up. Nope. Gentleman is a taxpayer. Please, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> My name is Larry Gormley. Um, I'm an attorney from Hopeful Phoenix, Gormley Roberts. With me is Mark Gasick, the owner, with his family at 10. 24 Ocean Boulevard, 1042, 42, I apologize. Um, you are, um, I'm sure, familiar with this development because it has been remarkably scrutinized. Um, we are here uh, because the, for reasons that aren't clear to me, the uh, planning board has sought direction from the Board of Selectmen before issuing a certificate of occupancy. As I trust you will appreciate, a certificate of occupancy is an administrative directive by the building inspector who must provide a reason if he or she decides that they are not going to issue the, um, the certificate. And that decision, that denial is appealable to the ZBA. The planning board has no part in that uh, determination. And we are here before the Board of Selectmen as it relates to an application to repair a seawall. Again, you have, we're not here for that tonight because we have been directed to come back to you in September. We were here in May. They are two, the CO and the <clears throat> seawall are unrelated. And in fact, Mr. Welch at the uh, April 21st meeting when we were here made that explicit observation that the seawall has nothing to do with the CO. So we are here with a family that spent a lot of time, effort, and money, is paying taxes to the town and is anxious to get into the, the home they've built um, as the summer slips away. So, again, I'm not sure why we're here. My request is that the selectmen, select board, direct the building, uh, the planning board, um, as I think they must, that there, there is nothing for the select board to opine um, at this point. The planning board has no input at this point, and the, the uh, the building inspector who is ready and willing to issue the CO should be permitted to do that. Thank you, sir. And, and may I just uh, go to the town manager for the brief, and uh, there is some documentation prepared. Can you lead us forward, sir? Mr. Chairman, um, I had been informed by the planning board and by the conservation commission that in issuing their special permit for this particular property, that in their opinion, what they had done is they had run all three of these issues together. And I said, that's inappropriate. <clears throat> and I asked them for no other reason than to just clarify it, that they take a vote and separate them in their mind. Uh, they refused to do that. Um, and in, 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 um, in recognition of that fact, they suggested that uh, a letter be sent to the Board of Selectmen for their advice on what to do with this. And um, my advice to the selectmen, at least with regards to the seawall, which is under their jurisdiction, is that that matter be taken up <clears throat> and that uh, some agreement be made that that be completed in the future. It can't be started before the 15th of September. Uh, December 1st sounds like a reasonable date, and we be that's before we have major storms and so forth for the winter. Um, as far as the uh, issuance of the building permit, is, uh, the CO is concerned, that's a matter for the building inspector. He has told me that he is ready to issue, that he has taken his final inspections, and uh, he has no reason not to issue the permit. So, Conservation Commission feels, um, I, I believe there's an as-built being done right now on the, uh, the retaining wall that was just finished just the other day. There was some additional refinements to be done. And they're ready to sign off on that, if that's correct. Thank you, correct. sir. Uh, and, and it's a matter strictly adhering to the certificate of occupancy. Selectman mm -hmm. Wilson. Any questions, I have, comments? I, I will uh, concur with Fred's. Sir. 
Yeah, I was on the planning board, and I would have rather have seen it just issued. It made sense to me. Yeah, thank you, Slick and Bright. No problem with, with that. No problem with it. Is the board prepared to make a motion? I'll make the motion. And specifically, the, the prepared motion, uh, Mr. Welch, would you um, prepare that motion in its most accurate form in order that this be granted? Well, Mr. Chairman, and I do have something on my computer. If you don't no, that's fine. I got it right in front of me. Uh, motion would uh, the planning board the respond to the planning board's request uh, regarding 1042 Ocean Boulevard. The Board of Selectmen has voted to obtain the letter of agreement for the completion of the seawall at 1042 uh, by December 1st, 2014. Given that agreement, we see no reason why a CO should not be issued for occupancy of the structure at 1042 Ocean Boulevard, given the completion of all work being completed in the opinion of the building inspector. We do not see it as unreasonable. As we do, see, do not see it as reasonable to delay uh, to hold occupancy of a completed structure that is ready for occupancy based upon a restructured seawall some months in the future. And will that grant the certificate of occupancy that you can have issued tomorrow? I believe that the building inspector will take that as his signal to do that. Okay. Any discussion? And just Esquire, back to you if you have any input before we make a vote. I know, Mr. Chairman. That's thank you, sir. All those in favor? Unanimous. Yeah. Thank you, and thank you for your courtesy. Good night. Good night. Continuing with the appointments, Roman 6, Philip Johnson, Unitil. Specifically, permission for installation of new gas lines and pressure regulating station, Falcon Circle and St. Cyr Drive. The agreement of taxation of the new lines for the presence in the right of way. Sir. That's correct, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Phil Johnson. I'm the construction supervisor with Unitil Gas. I'm accompanied by uh, Mel Schuler, the operations manager, and Alec O'Mara, public re relations. Um, we are looking to install <clears throat> approximately 5,000 feet of two inch gas main in the said streets, Falcone Circle and St. Cyr Drive, along with approximately 20 contracted services currently, possibly more later. Um, we have applied for the excavation permit and we're just waiting for approval from the selectman. Thank you. Selectman Wilson. Time frame? Uh, we'd like to start as soon as possible. Um, our hopes are to have two to three crews in that development and possibly we'll be out of there in six to eight weeks. And this is going to be on the shoulder of the road. Where's where's the line going to be? Yeah, like? we met with um, we met with the the water department and sewer rep and uh, Chris Jacobs. We all met down there Friday. Um, it looks like if you're heading in towards Falcone Circle, we're going to be the left hand side of the road in the pavement, uh, about three feet from the edge of pavement. Okay. So really, it'll that'll eliminate any driveway, lawn crossings, anything like that, which might be good. And, and you're doing, this is what you're doing on Winnicott Road? Yes. Because this looks like that project's been going on quite a long time. Uh, Winnicott Road is a bare steel gas main replacement. Um, so we're replacing some uh, 8,000 feet of bare steel main, which um, includes almost twice as much work as installing new gas main. Okay. Now, Aquarian has been providing us with updates on their annual anticipated projects. Sure. And now that it seems that you gentlemen are being pretty proactive with um, the infrastructure replacement and so forth, is it possible for you to communicate with us once a year or whatever what your projects and the value of them will be so we have an idea what areas will yeah, be Yeah, I don't think there's a huge problem with that. We like to meet with the public works. We usually meet with... Uh, mm -hmm them in the beginning of the year, give them a heads up on our construction schedule. It's something I can pass on to, to the board. Yeah, we just have a all. little printout or anticipate spending X million dollars or whatever it is on the following streets or areas. Sure. I think it would be nice for us to know because you go by and watch people digging and you say, what are they, you know, right. what are they doing yep. over there? No, that, that shouldn't be a problem at all. So I think that would be good. Thank you. Um, of course, the growth projects come up during the year so that might not we might not have too much of a future um on what's coming up for the for growth projects but right. without replacement absolutely okay good thank you sir. sir um 
So this is where you're putting the gas lines in for the public res for the Correct. private residents, yep. and they put, um, paid in. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I heard about this project from Barbara and her husband that are back there. Yep. And they're very excited about good, it. So good. So I was glad. Don't worry. It's it. it's a project that's been in the makings for several years. It uh, finally worked for for both parties and. We're excited to get it started. Well, it sounds like it's working out quite sure. well. Thank you. Sure. I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great service for the for the people who live in that community. Uh, is this the way to do it by petition? Is that where they it appears they have petitioned you to? Uh, in a development that size, where there is currently no gas main on the street, mm -hmm. generally that's the best way to get the most uh, interest in the gas, which. The more people you have interested in the gas service, the less the cost to the customer. Um, this is a pretty extensive project, so um, I'm not sure what the what the cost was to each resident, but it was fairly reasonable considering considering the amount of work that's, that's going to be done. So, so, so the putting in the street costs the residents. It does, yes. Okay, not just the, the line. Yeah, it, it's a, it's a rate of return type thing. In ten years, we need to get so much money back. What I'm, we just, don't I'm, I'm just asking because I'm sure we have other neighborhoods. Yeah, that's definitely the best. I'm best thinking route. of West of 95 on Toll Farm Road. <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah, could be interested in something sure. like that. Yeah, so. it really is. The more interest you can present, uh, the more likely the project will fly. Okay, very good. Thank you. I concur. Thank you. Mr. Welch, any comments? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we recommend that the board approve it. Uh, subject to some requirements. The requirements are that, <coughs> excuse me, the requirements are that they receive a street opening permit and contained within that permit that uh, an officer of the corporation must sign it. There is a requirement within the permit that they are subject to uh, taxation and that it's subject to taxation for use of the public way. Sure. Yep. So, and I know you already understand yep. all of those sorts of good things. Yep. Uh, and that that be binding upon them for this installation. And I may make the comment that uh, we did receive a petition from the residents up there. Unfortunately, the selectmen don't own the gas company, right. so they can't grant it. So we'll leave that up to you now. folks. <laughs> um, yes, one more brief one. First of all, I think um, Aquarian has learned that they uh, uh, benefit from having a public presence, and so they've been coming in quarterly so to report to this board you've been flying under the radar basically sure. for a long time yep. and I certainly have no objection to having you come in and do periodic public reports which might bring this to the attention of neighborhoods as Rusty said and that might encourage people who just sit uh, sitting there thinking about it to want to take some action uh, and I want to comment on one thing that the manager just said. As part of the agreement that the executive uh, officer has to sign, uh, you mentioned the agreement for the taxation of the new lines for their presence in the town right of way. That's, so that will be a given. That's contained within the licensing permit. Thank you very much. And with regards to that um, uh, dissertation by you, Mr. Welch, is that a motion for this evening? You could get it. Suggest it could be, sir. I'll make I that motion. I'll second. Incorporating yep. the town manager's remarks. A second? Okay. A second by Selectman Wolsey. All those in favor? Unanimous. Good. See, that was hard. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you, sir. Okay. <laughs> Romans 7, approval of minutes, July 14, 2014. I will so move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Second. Mr. Vital, all those in favor? Good. Unanimous. Roman 8, Town Manager's Report. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, the town continues to have vacancies on various town boards, committees, and commissions. We would ask those interested to please check the website uh, for the list of vacancies and contact the Selectman's Office for consideration to be appointed. I'm sorry to report that uh, we have received the resignation of Ellen Goffel, uh, who was resigned from the Conservation Commission after many years of service so that she may devote her limited time to, the, to her new position on the New England Fisheries Management Council. Reviews of the projected 2015 town budget have started. I expect the town manager's reviews to be completed by August 19th and the selectmen to receive the 
budget from the finance department on August 22nd. I believe I will be finished with the initial reviews this week. Uh, I've been investigating the insurance requirements for the licensing of taxis, and I'm finding that the average insurance requirements are $500,000 per cap. In many cases around the country, those are set by the state through their public utilities commissions as opposed to being set by the individual communities as they are in New Hampshire. I'll be on vacation for part of the month of September and would request that the chief of police be appointed as the acting town manager from September 16th to se September 29th. Sir, I have two other items. One is, um, as you know, we have a special run through town which takes about two hours by two people. Uh, a special event, the group Esprit de Corps from Montreal to run to Boston and they have asked to waive the $5 fee for the permit, considering they're only running two people. A motion, please. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? <laughs> Unanimous. Thank you. The other thing I have, Mr. Chairman, is uh, as part of the uh, um, items to be signed for the consent agenda, I have a request for a release of a welfare lien from the legal department. Okay. So that's it, sir. Thank you, sir. Questions for the town manager? Select my um, Fred, will the chief of police, when he is acting in your stead, have a have a decibel meeting with him? Uh, it's entirely possible. You just never know. <laughs> and on uh, the um, resignation of uh, Ellen Gaithel from the Conservation Commission, uh, she and her husband David both have been so proactive yes. that she goes back to to Vivian Marcotte, who was also an outstanding member of the Conservation Commission. And uh, she has uh, certainly had an extraordinary career uh, in advocating for the conservation effort. And I, I congratulate her, and I think this board uh, shares in my, in my feeling. Uh, she's uh, given so much of herself to this community. And uh, I think we really uh, should expect, actually, if we could maybe get a letter together for Sorry, Ellen. Sorry, take care of it. Oh, excellent. See, see, you're way ahead of us. Other than that, thank you. Have a good vacation and don't get into trouble. Try not to. No trees coming down. No. Sir. No, thank you. Yeah, just on, on the Ellen Gaithel, I mean, here's a lady who's not only just her, but her family have done so much for the for the conservation effort in this town. If, if you ever get a chance, she has a little, small little business down the beach yeah. that talks all about the sea. You, your grandkids would love it. I took my 23-month-old down there and it was very interesting uh, uh, get down and see it but I know she's worked very hard with the fisheries and I know they got a lot of work coming up over the next few years so yeah. uh, congratulate her on that board I know she's going to do an excellent job and was we're, we're sad to see her leave this this board thank you awesome. okay wonderful thank you mr. chairman yes, just one other thing <coughs> just realized that uh, the Lottery Commission is going to be in town on Thursday the 31st from 11 to 2 at Marley's Market. Uh, they're going to uh, hold a lottery event there. So uh, I don't believe that means they're giving out money, but uh, they, they're certainly invited to go. Um, may I intersperse a comment? If you must. If someone, ma'am. If someone can tell me the last time this town got proceeds from the New Hampshire lottery, I would like to hear about it. Thank you, ma'am. They Roman. used to contribute Mr. Bridal to the school yes, budget, but I believe that is past history, and I'm not in a mood to encourage anybody to buy lottery tickets as long as the town of Hampton is left out of the equation. Thank so you. there. Roman 9, old business, Slug and Wilson. Uh, you're a glutton for punishment, aren't you? All righty. We, are, we have paid our dues for membership in the New Hampshire Municipal Association. We have been notified by the NHMA that the floor policies uh, are due to be presented to them by August 15th. That means they want our opinion as one community on what's been proposed here. I hope you've all read it. Okay, I would like just to know when me. are we going to sit down and review it before pardon the 15th pardon me. of is, August. Is it is a point of order? Are, are we talking about that on the new business, number two? Yeah. No. 
you expect to do this under new business tonight? You expect to go through this whole thing? I, I read it in an hour, and I'm perfectly happy well, to endorse it. I read it as it. well, but I have questions on some of the... Well, it's it's under the agenda for later on. Any well, old business like we'll, we'll see. We will plow through. And just one other thing on the uh, consent decree on the uh, <laughs> LGC. Do you, do you have any guidance for us, Fred, on what they've come up with? I read it. It's going to take three Philadelphia lawyers and a retired judge to tell us. Okay. Um, and it needs to be signed. It has not been signed as of yet by the state. Okay. Well, that's no surprise. All righty. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Sir. No. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Sir. <coughs> so. Thank you. Uh, Mary Louise, on the yes. uh, um, health trust, uh, I, I think that does uh, pose some significant questions that should be staffed through the town attorney, through our finance director, and for our uh, um, employee benefits um, and personnel lawyer. So if we can uh, get a chop on that, Mr. Welch, and discuss that. There are some... Uh, um, it's already marked up for council when he returns on Thursday. Yeah, and, and just to highlight, there's, a, um, if for lack of a better word, a babysitter that's been appointed at $180,000 a year. Our health insurance side of the house is paying 90% of that. As I read this, that's correct. So the health, our health premiums to that unit is going to subsidize the property trust, which I thought was the whole problem in the first place. Um, there are uh, cessation provisions there for uh, our contracts that we insure our town for. Uh, there are certain benchmarks, so it's uh, it's very much in the gray area. There's nothing black and white about this, and I think this is uh, um, a very very serious issue. So if we can staff this. And I agree with you, Mary Louise. We need to come up to speed on this and uh, very quickly. And furthermore, if, is this still only addressing the time frame from 2010 to the present? Because we still have the lost years in there, do we not, Mr. Bridal? Yes, we do. Thank you very much. Roman 10, new business. One, question of permitting, limiting seafood sidewalk vendors' licenses that are outside the cordoned off area of the festival. Mr. Welch. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we've received a number of requests from people on the west side of Ocean Boulevard, uh, running all the way down to, I believe it's L Street at this point. Um, we did inquire of the Chief of Police and the Fire Chief, and uh, they would suggest the following, that uh, the use of Ocean Boulevard south of H Street by vendors who wish to obtain a seafood sidewalk vendor's license from the Board of Selectmen <coughs> to sell merchandise through the, be, uh, during the seafood festival be permitted with the following restrictions. One, the sidewalk cannot be blocked or restricted so that pedestrians are impeded or forced onto the roadway. Two, egress to and from any property is not impeded. Three, no tent or other kind of, of any kind of sort to be used or to be located on the sidewalk. The cooking or heating of anything is prohibited on the sidewalk and the seafood festival sidewalk vendor's license. Requests must be accompanied by a drawing or plan showing that the above restrictions are met. And no sleazy T-shirts. Um, I didn't get into First Amendment issues. Uh, there is a prepared motion regarding this, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. That's the one I just read. Okay. Is there a? Uh, I will make that motion, and I'll second, second. And the chief did a great job on that. They did. And all those in favor, unanimous. Thank you very much, sir. We have uh, now. Select and a review of the New Hampshire Municipal Association's 2015-16 legislative policy. Mr. Welch, if you can lead us into this, oh, please. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if you dare. Uh -huh. Well, I'm not sure I dare. President, uh, I want in here. Actually, I'm hoping one of the board members goes because I think that needs to happen. Um, would be good to be there is a legislative policy guidance document that was handed out by the Municipal Association that deals with uh, their floor policies uh, that will be brought up in the conference on September 15th. One of the things that I think should be brought up during that conference is that uh, you'll note that uh, ones that have already been recommended have no explanation. Uh, they've been on there for a number of years in some cases and they just they, they don't provide any information at all. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm assuming that members of the boards of selectmen in various towns change from time to time yeah. and they're being asked to yeah. ingest this information and regurgitate out something with regard to it 
but they have no idea what it's about because nobody's telling them. So I think that sh they should give all the information on everything that's on the list every time they publish it and not shortcut this. So. Good suggestion. There are a number of action policies dealing with the general administration and governance of cities and towns. Um, some of these policies are uh, yeah, interesting. Some of them are standing policies and recommendations. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a group of policies on finance and revenue. Uh, some of them are action items, as they were in the previous one, and some of them are standing policies. And uh, the same goes for uh, infrastructure development and land use. Uh, all of these are very interesting. Um, some of them don't have a chance in God's green earth of getting passed, I believe. But uh, they're here. Uh, they will be suggested to the legislature. and. Um, Whatever happens to them, happens to them. I think we've all been through the process of what happens to bills if they're submitted. So um, I don't know how you want to proceed, Mr. Chairman. There are three different groups. There are about 10 or 12 in each group, that, uh, and some of them are more numerous than others. There's, the first one is over 20, 26. 26, yeah. Um, how do you want to proceed, sir? Well, I don't make the rules, and I'm just one voice here. Is there a consensus on how to proceed with? This agenda item, Selectman Wilson. I think we can go through them one by one. So I, I have no problem with 15 out of the 26 in the first section, but if we could just read them one by one and give the public an idea of the gist of them, and then if there are questions or any contentions on part of the board, then. Is there an alternative course of action? I would propose one that would be uh, that each select board member uh, email the town manager, yay or nay, on any of these individual uh, items, and that this document be posted on the uh, town website. And that is a motion. I'll second that. All those in favor? Ba, 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 okay, further discussion? 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 Ms. Wilson? Why can't we discuss them? The public sitting out there, we're being asked to give our opinion as a board. And there are some serious questions in here. And I know it's, you know, I mean, gee whiz, this might take us a few minutes. But uh, I've gone through the whole thing. I, I imagine several of you have. And I think that we have questions, and we ought to be able to work them out. Thank you. But, you know, everybody wants to go home and really go. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Four. All those opposed? Selectman Wolsey, thank one, you. One thing with the the NHMA, we uh, last year at the um, yes we did. at the uh, deliberative session, mm -hmm. uh, there was a vote to to take our membership out of that, and we didn't do it this year because we had already paid that. Mm -hmm. uh, what are our plans for next year or this this coming year as we move forward? Uh, there was a vote to uh, not renew our membership last year but it had already been done. That's um, correct. We, we received the bill in usually November, December. Yeah. <laughs> we refused to pay it until town meeting um, because of the appropriation. If the, uh, <clears throat> if the regular budget had passed, it wouldn't have been paid, um, basically. But we, we do try to pay it after the first of the year. Um, there are two issues with this. One is the membership. And two are the labor contracts that deals with um, our management employees who, in their contracts, have the right to attend those meetings, and the town is supposed to pay for them. So I think those are the two issues you have to deal with. Well, I think before we we enter into this next, the, when it when it comes time to renew it, that we we have to sit down and have a serious discussion on that. I I, I, I would just say this that um, the. Uh, legal decision or that agreement between the BSR and PLT and the uh, Health Trust. Uh, there's a significant thing we already talked about and we could uh, piggyback your issue onto that when we speak next month on the uh, Municipal Association membership. Um, we could we could kill two birds with one stone if that works for you. Uh, that's okay, um, Bobby. Gentlemen, you're sitting there with a perfectly straight face wanting to have a discussion. I was wondering. What did we just do? That's I mean that. Okay. Uh, so mo moving on. Yeah. Um, moving I on. have I have uh, 
under new business, and it was just received. Uh, it's from Mr. Silverdick, who um, is the uh, chair, um, the trustees, um, and he has questions on HB 297, SB 219. Mr. Welch, just for your reference, there is his letter and the minutes, and if you could chop that uh, and advise the selectmen of any courses of action that may be appropriate. We, we already have an article drafted for SB 219 because the Board of Selectmen asked it to be submitted to the General Court for enactment, and they did enact it. Uh, as far as HB 297 is concerned, I haven't had a chance to sit down with counsel and discuss it. Could you please reach out to Mr. Silverdick and help yeah. me work on that issue? Thank you very much. Okay. Roman 11, I'm entertainment licenses under review. We, we have none of that. Was that scratched? Is that correct, Mr. Welch? Yes, sir. Okay. We don't need this tonight, Fred. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank Roman 12, closing comments? Seeing none? Up. Good mine. Goodness. <clears throat> ha. Where to begin? Um, first of all, I appreciate the fire chief's uh, letters to the planning board. Uh, and I was going to ask the chief of police tonight, but we can do it at a future date. The planning review committee for the planning board is a terrific idea. They do want the department heads present uh, when they are working on the presentation to bring to the planning board. I would like to see us encouraging um, the chief uh, and deputy especially to uh, question the parking requirements for some of this construction. Uh, when you have uh, 36 units and only 40 parking spaces, we're, we're being killed at that beach, the lack of parking. We are absolutely being killed, and it's creating terrible situations, such as the, the one we saw, the freelancing one that we saw tonight. And I don't know if it would be appropriate for us as a board to just ask the, the chiefs if they are sitting in, uh, when they sit in with the planning board, to at least try perhaps to challenge the number of parking spaces so that they comply with the legal requirements. Um, these days it's unusual for individuals to have, uh, let's say even a, a married couple to have one vehicle uh, there's no room, uh, and I challenge that, for employees. They're told, oh, well, they'll find parking spaces somewhere else and they can, they can walk. Um, that beach is in serious trouble now. I did have to chuckle over the uh, impromptu parking <coughs> areas because if any of you watched the latest precinct commission meeting, um, they're trying to go after the uh, freelance parking people because if they're exempt from the precinct taxing rates, they may not be any longer if they continue to derive revenue from illegal parking uh, enterprises. So, uh, but, but I think we, we've reached a critical, well, we've passed a critical situation at the beach for the parking. And if our department heads at least can perhaps, uh, the fire chief from point of view of fire safety and congestion, and the chief of police from point of view of the terrible parking problems that, that they admit they have down at the beach. It is brought up regularly. I, well, it is. Can, we, can we be ferocious or can well, we? Can we, are, they? we are ferocious from the standpoint that we are bringing it up and we are telling them that they need to, uh, they need to strictly adhere to the ordinance. Uh, unfortunately, the ordinance is written in such a way as that any business at the beach there's no requirement for them to provide parking at all. Well, now, whose job is it to help get the ordinances squared away for that stuff? Well, that's the way the planning board had submitted, I believe that was the planning board submitted an amendment to the ordinance quite a number of years ago, mm -hmm. and, and it has never been re-amended. But apparently they're not even adhering to the requirements now of two spaces per per unit. And, and it's only that. in some sections yeah. of the beach that that's required. Wait, wait, so it's, it's killing us. I know, I know. The lack of <laughs> adequate parking down there is killing us. I so. do think the um, planning board is doing what is legally required. They, they are currently, yes. There's no question about that. 
Well, you're talking about planning for the future a little earlier, uh, Mr. Griffin, and if we don't start planning now, there won't be any future because it's long past the time that the horse has gone out of the barn. Any further closing comments? Just in regard to that, it, I, I think the planning board does what the planning board does, and I, I don't think it's our business to tell them what they're to do. They're elected. Yeah, they're right. elected, and I don't think it's our business to tell them what to do, and I think the chiefs let people know that this problem's in the boards, and I think that's, yeah. I think it's good to. For the record, who is the liaison to the planning board? Me. Thank you, sir. In my concept of operations for staff planning and staff execution is that this board would address with Mr. Griffin mm -hmm. uh, at their leisure, um, at their own time perhaps, um, any issues they have with the planning board. Thank you. A motion to adjourn? Mr. Waddell, second by Mr. Vital. All those in favor? Thank you. I've already read down many of it, me with council. Oh.